行。So I've been working in Alibaba for over a year, and I started to work on containers after I joined Alibaba. So I am uh, an active contributor now. My partner is Lewin Tai is here. Hello everyone, I'm Liu Lantao. I uh, joined Google in 2015 and uh, I worked on Kubernetes and the maintainer of Cloud Native. <laughs> and also have colleagues from Dog, Thomas, Derek. This is a small meeting room. It's also my first time seeing so many participants. And the session has 35 minutes. And uh, uh, Liu and I will speak 15 minutes each. And then we will leave for 5 to 7 minutes for questions. So let's start. So for the first 15 minutes, I would like to focus on oh, the integration uh, because this is still uh, new, it's different from DOG, so I will focus on how to use it. And for more details, we will look at the, the status quo of container D. Uh, container D is uh, from a uh, dog company, and uh, by the end of 2017, it was uh, it became part of uh, CNCF. Uh, it's, it has very good development uh, for two years, and uh, it's also the very fast. And uh, there are many clients, and uh, this is now the fifth graduation project of CNCF. And now a lot of large companies use um, Container D. Uh, we have uh, KE and IKE working on IBM Cloud and Alibaba, Microsoft, AWS. Last month, a colleague from eBay said they are also using Container D. So, again, there are many clients of Container D. I believe Container D is a mature software. It can provide a, a high performance runtime engine, uh, but uh, uh, not many would. To transfer from dog to continuity. A continuity will not provide some client facing uh, features. For example, for example, image building uh, continuity is uh, more integrated into a large system. So if you want to uh, merge from Docker to container D or container DCI, uh, you may need to understand its architecture and how it's uh, run and it can create some container platform. Now let's look at this architecture. This is a well-drawn um, diagram by Derek. Now a lot of cloud platforms adopt container D. On the uh, bottom, you see that container D support container runtime, cutter, so, uh, not uh, there's uh, more than run. You can also uh, select other types of functions. So in this uh, diagram, you can see a lot of modules in Container D. Uh, let's focus on Container D API. It's a standard. Uh, this is design. It provides a gRPC API, which can be used to create uh, various functions. For example, Docker engine 
So that's a continuous D would like to be integrated into large system. So this is client and our service side. We have different modules, um, such as content and the runtime, etc. These modules. Can uh, maintain some uh, low level resource, for example, uh, storage format, uh, such as overlay. It can also have do uh, no spacing. It allows different clients use the same connect container D um, because they have less space, they are separated. In addition, container D also has very important function, snapshot. It's, it's similar to driver, but it's more capable. It can provide some easy to operate portals. Uh, moreover, D also provide promises API. You can use it to monitor container D's own process and the progress of the containers they manage. And uh, Liu will uh, talk about CI. He will give you more details. Um, so, a brief summary. Kind of the, can provide API service. You can use your own API to achieve a lot of things, but it's different from Docker, which can do pull image, which is a large API. Uh, so container D doesn't do that. In container D, we have smart client. Back to what I just said, um, uh, the side of the container D server. Um, it supports low-level resources. Uh, the API is uh, uh, wrapped by gRPC. So on the client uh, side, you can use a low-level resource, uh, including some container resource. So on client side, you can do anything, uh, for example, installation um, or backend to frontend. Let's look at this, uh, a small example. Uh, when we want to pull image, uh, it's not a call of one API but four API. Uh, for example, deep service, content service, uh, snap, shorter, and the image. This image may be different from the um, uh, image we usually talk about. It's used to manage data. It's used to connect to some shorter and some preliminary data. So on client side, a lot of things are done, and the portals are quite small. So these uh, services can be reused and uh, work together. So the client uh, can call the image and the uh, portal of uh, API. Generally speaking, I don't want to call container D as microservice architecture, uh, but there are clear boundaries between different modules, so the client can do a lot of things on the client side. For example, if I want to change the position of the current process, you can uh, do this without changing the code uh, in backend, so it's very flexible. So the uh, API can be uh, used or operated with our client side. Of course, our service and there are also a lot of uh, work to be done.
For example, if I need a new uh, format of image or security container such as Mukata, how do we integrate them? Uh, because we uh, can't just to maintain one branch because it will lead to high maintenance cost. So in container D, any component is a plug-in. So how do we understand this? So uh, I said the modules have clear boundaries. So they can be grouped into different plugins. So in the code library, uh, there is a dependency graph to be maintained. So based on the uh, method of re registration, uh, the plugins can be defined and uh, extended. So back to my topic, how do we integrate third-party service? One method is to create a new container D. So container D provides you with a common entry point. So you can um, start your go route file and add the entry point and uh, plus the third party service. So this document can create your own container D binary. So very quickly, you can uh, connect with third party. Uh, but it may be may be more troublesome. So the second uh, method is external. So it's an open source method. You don't need to do orchestration. And we support two plugins. One is proxy. The other is um, about a container, and uh, Leo will give you more details. So first, pl proxy plugin, simply speaking, container D can uh, forward the uh, request from upstream to the third party. So maybe more users would choose snap shorter. Uh, so currently only snapshot and the content are supported, so it's a forwarding service. So we should implement APIs on third party plugin. And um, with this uh, their service, the information sent to container D, uh, which is read and connect to your server. And and then the upstream request is forwarded to the third party server. Uh, that means you don't have to change any uh, code on the service. And, and uh, there's also runtime plugin. This is also a plugin. So how was it used previously? Well, we in, uh, integrate runtime or kata. We would add a configuration for runtime. Docker can use continuity to generate a shell script and a, a rapid service. Uh, which may look like around C, but it may lead to uh, some problems. And also, you will face some limitations. Uh, so now we have runtime API. No, so if your own container can implement API, it's okay. And then API is binary. 
So your API should also uh, follow the naming protocols. So where you start your uh, server, the server can be found. So API is uh, looks like this. Uh, so on the CUI Windows container and the Carter all implement this API. So it, so it looks like this. Uh, I O container D uh, dot run C dot V it will be um, turning to container shame. Run this C they will they will seek for the binary. So this will integrate with the third party security container. So that's about integration. And, and I'll hand over to Liu. Mm, hello, um, Liu Lantau. Uh, uh, today I would like to talk about Container D on Kubernetes engine the application and I will cover Container D and uh, the integration with Kubernetes. Uh, we have defined an interface um, um, Kubernetes called it Kubernetes CRI. So it's uh, a set of functions defined. If a runtime can do this, these functions, it can achieve integration with Kubernetes. Uh, so we have found that there were a lot of uh, runtime, uh, including Container D. We hope we want to support different runtime. So we defined this interface. After two years development, there are more runtime. And uh, we'll focus on Container D, Cryo, machines. Is uh, uh, used to support Docker, and the community, uh, would, some of the people in the community would like to remove this. So in the future, we'll, we'll use the CRI to do integration. And uh, also, had run me the precursor of Kata. And the Fracti and the pouch from Alibaba and the Rocket Birdlet, etc. So this is about CRI. In order to integrate with uh, Kubernetes, we need to implement CRI. So we have this container D CRI plugin. Find the code uh, in this uh, link. And uh, 1.1 version, we built this into the container D. So if you have container D binary, it's uh, supported. It's about if it's self built uh, or use Docker, which is part of container D, you will have a CRI support loading. In April 2018, it's it's production ready. Mm. So I'll show you this. <laughs> Container D type. So under every list, you can have a lot. I can have a lot of test cases, and most of them are red. If they are red, then Docker, in Docker, they're also red. <laughs> so you can see my desk. <laughs> 
So now it's production ready. So when we compare with previous integration with Docker, for Do you can see there's no Docker chain. We only have a Kubelet and a, um, Container D integration. So in terms of uh, stability and performance, it will improve a lot. This is a simple architecture. So Kubernetes tells us uh, I want to pull image, and uh, Ceres um, tell us we want to have pull image. Then we use Container D to pull in pull image, and then Kubelet want to start pod, and then we set up a pod environment and. Uh, then when we set up pod network, we use CNI plugin, CR plugin. Then the pod is ready. This is a comparison with Docker Shim performance. So you can see, for example, 105 pod batch step up startup benchmark and also 105 pods management overhead benchmark then we will see the components research resource usage the reason for using 105 pods is that because the default support pod number is 105 the red one is container D and the red one is docker chain basically all better we recommend that gradually we can shift it to CRI because Docker Shim, Docker support. In our plan, we will remove from Kubernetes. And uh, I don't know whether we will um, duplicate or not. Um, but we need someone to maintain it. Then how can we shift from Docker integration to Cryo Container D, this kind of new CRI integration for Container D? It's very simple. If you have Docker 18.05 installed in your machine, we already have Container D. And uh, they have, um, as long as you install Docker, you already have container. So when you start Docker, you can also enable CRS, CRI. Then you add several flags. Then you should not talk with original Docker shim, but with the container D, and you should ensure that you have a CRI plugin, then if everything's ready, then it's done. Then you already have container D. So actually, we are still using Docker, but a new version of Docker. And this is the integration of container D with Kubernetes, and we hope that you can gradually shift your production environment into this one because most of the functions will be here as I pointed um, for uh, Docker. Um, we need someone to maintain If not, then a lot of new functions will not be there. And for GKE, um, GKE is Google um, Kubernetes engine. It's hosted um, Kubernetes service provided by Google Cloud. And uh, basically, all the cloud have this kind of service. Container D 1.1. Last year it was beta, and uh, not long ago we have mm, we have uh, used Container D for master node because I'm on vacation now. So I. Actually, during my vacation, uh, they can reach GA. And probably at the end of this year or next year, we will use Container D for all the nodes. 
for old nodes, it will become in Docker. Just now, I talked about containerd and the Kubernetes integration, and uh, containerd is used in GKE. Actually, in GKE, when we use containerd, we can do a lot of things. Now, let me briefly introduce um, GKE Sandbox. As we all know, also container is very convenient, but in terms of security, still there are some problems. So we use a host Linux kernel. If there is a bug, then um, they may escape from the container. But then they will store your data or influence your production environment. So we already have a lot of uh, pre previous problems. To solve this problem, um, GKE has done one thing, that outside the container we want to add another layer of protection. If you have strong dis uh, demand for isolation, uh, you can have that. Uh, we are based on GVisor. For GVisor, a brief introduction. Actually, it's an open source by Google, and it's a sandbox technology based on user space kernel written in Go. And uh, it is also uh, OCI conformant, run as C, so your application is in user space, and this call is through it to have virtualization. So as a result, you cannot directly um, access to host kernel. So as a result, you can have two layers of um, security isolation. To support GVisor in container, we need to make sure that GVisor is different from run C. On the left side is run C. On the right side is GVisor. It's different. You can see GVisor have its own kernel. And in run C for container D, they suppose your application is run on host kernel, so they may directly send message to you, or when you exit process, you can uh, directly observe it. But for GVisor, all the container process is run on the GVisor kernel. You cannot directly get this information from host kernel, so you need to talk with the GVisor kernel for this information. So in this way, for container D, they need different behavior to treat uh, GVisor and ordinary run C. So we need to have a layer of abstract. So under this abstract, they can have different behavior. To solve the problem, we have a discussion with container D community how to solve it. For the benefit of container D, it has a lot of interface, and uh, we go through every interface, and uh, we find that the shim is the right layer. So we decide in shim, shim level we have an abstract. So we have shim v2 for gvisor sending signal or monitor application exit or taking a monitoring stats. Uh, previously, we cannot do it now. We can abstract it under um, shim v2. And uh, for gvisor, they can also use their own special implementation. When we have shim v2, actually, we can do the gvisor integration. We have an internal shim. And uh, all these behaviors that cannot be handled previously can be handled now. And now Shim V2 is now a standard. For example, Windows is doing so. So if you have uh, your own runtime, you can also use it.
This is at the continuity level to support uh, GVisor, and um, at the Kubernetes side, we also need to make some changes. So when we start part, we need to tell Kubernetes uh, it will be run in GVisor, and so we have an API called Runtime Plus, and for different runtime, you can have defined a runtime class. And then when you start the pod, you can use this runtime class. So we have a GVisor runtime class. And at the CRI level, we need to send this uh, runtime info. So we say this pod is using this runtime. And then we need to configure this runtime is correspondent to what shim. So we add this configure here. When everything is done, then we from Kubernetes ATI to every interface to container D support, all these are connected now. We have an animation here. Anyway, it's not important. So you can see here, N to N. And user said, I want to create a pod and use GVisor. And Kubernetes can see it. And they use uh, CRI create a pod. And they will use GVisor. And then we have a configuration here. Uh, if you want to GVisor, what you should do, then you need to use shim. Then we need to start the shim. Then Shin knows how to uh, manage GVisor container and how to communicate with them. And uh, the same method can support Kata. And uh, for GKE Sandbox, last year uh, it was alpha. This year, May, beta. And uh, we still cannot use it in China. But anyway, uh, if you use G Cloud, it's like this. And have a quick recap. Kubernetes container D integration is ready for production use. We recommend you to shift. Otherwise, in the future, maybe two to three years later, if you have not shifted, you may have some problems because Docker shame. A lot of functions will not be updated, and uh, you cannot have the security fix or bug fix. Or you can uh, shift it to other CRI. And also GKE container support is beta. And uh, in the future, it will become default. And um, all the nodes will be container D. And GKE sandbox is mm, built on um, Kubernetes plus container and plus GVisor. And the container D is extensible. We have a long list of interface. So whatever you want to do, you just look at the interface, and you may find something that is suitable for you. That's all. Thank you. So we are just on time. We have five minutes for questions. Can you share with us when you shift from Docker runtime to container D, what area should we pay attention to? Uh, I guess you all heard the question. What we need to pay attention to is that because all the things are in container D, Docker itself have the all the container have state. So all this is moved to container D. Then you cannot see it in doc in in Docker and the image. We cannot see it anymore. So Docker and Kubernetes will they will just share underlying container D. Kubernetes do all the thing, and um, Docker will know, and whatever done in Docker, Kubernetes will not know because Docker have different application scenario with Kubernetes. We want to, we don't want to 
have overlap, and uh, how can we mm, do debug? Actually, in upstream, based on CRI, we have an um, interface called CRI Cartel. It's similar to Docker CRI. This is based on CRI. For example, uh, previously when you run Docker PS, you can see uh, a lot of container. Now, for Kubernetes, we also have some optimization. And if, um, uh, when you run Kubernetes, you can see a long list of containers. And we cannot uh, exert megadata. So you cannot know what the containers are for. And then in ContainerD, all these containers are re -con redesigned. Uh, and uh, you can clearly see the container name and also in what port they are. Please use a microphone. In Docker, all the functions uh, you want to have, you just uh, change to create card. Um, because they are using the same CRI interface. In Kubernetes um, community, there is another runtime called the CRI. It's also compatible compared to Container D. What the advantages and disadvantages? How do you suggest the users to use Container D or CIO? Actually, it's your own choice. Because previously, when asked by other people, we will just say, we hope that this one is not important to you. In including Craig Cardo, it's a standard um, tool. No matter you use Container D or Cryo, it's the same. So it will support both runtime. For Kubernetes user, you don't need to care about whether it's ContainerD or Cryo. Whether when you run or ContainerD or Cryo, we hope the operators OSD will decide. For example, we want to GKE, we will use Container op op Optimized Operating System. And then we will still use Docker for Runhead or ICU-SE. They will use Supreo. So we hope to reach a status that you can make your own um, decision. It's not important. As for the two projects itself, ContainerD, have Google, Ali, Docker, Microsoft, IBM are maintaining it, and uh, it Cryo run head is maintaining Intel. And they also have a lot. So you can take a look by yourselves. Uh, when we eliminate Docker D, a lot of functions will be missing. For example, quota management, uh, rock rotator. Uh, how do you view this?
next door? Mm -hmm. How do you compare, compare the two? Yeah, like they have community. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know how you respond well, to that. Well, we're not going to keep it down well, well. Don't think it's going to be the same number. Are we working with the team? Uh, we're doing it. 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 We're Another important reason is that GKE, including um, the, all the solutions around um, VM, each node is VM. If we use Carter now, then it means uh, virtualization is uh, embedded. Um, but uh, without embedding the, the virtual um, machine, uh, Google doesn't have this uh, scenario. So uh, Kubernetes is very good. It doesn't need to embed virtual. A machine. There are different platforms. Uh, some don't need virtualization. So this is our use case. Different vendors have different use cases. Of course, we support Carter as well, uh, but we want to solve this uh, issue of virtualization. So again, both are useful. Uh, I just uh, now uh, see continuity support uh, X, uh, X and uh, RM. And uh, so how long between its commercialization? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm continuing to continue to the continue the Thank you very much.